is electric. Welcome back, everyone, to the lovely Norfolk Broads. Um, yeah, we're overlooking Horsey Gap and Sea Pauling, roughly, if you know your beach resorts in Norfolk. Anyway, uh, I thought today, while I'm sat in the car and waiting for Susan, I'd have a go at doing an introduction, at least, to the video that I need to start doing about the Huawei battery and the fact that it's DC coupled, not AC coupled. What's the difference? What can you expect with a hybrid inverter? Inverter. because a lot of people are being recommended to go hybrid installers are recommending hybrid a lot a lot of people are going to go hybrid but they don't quite know perhaps what the differences are and what they're going to get so let's try and cover um, the differences that i'm experiencing so that it can make some sense to those people that are either thinking of going hybrid or i've got one on order and just don't know what they're going to get so I was going to do this video in my garage so I could point at inverters and show the flow of electricity, etc. But we'll try and do it from the car instead. So hybrid inverters and AC coupled. I've now had both. So my last battery that I had installed was the Give Energy AC coupled. And this time around, we've got the Huawei hybrid inverter. So let's cover what the differences really are. So not in its usage, but the differences, the physical bits that are going to make a difference to you. And the really big thing is, is where the solar panels and the battery are connected. So you need to think about it as the coupling is between the solar panels and the battery. That's the way I look at it. Now, whether that's absolutely correct in the definitions of AC coupled and DC coupled, I'm not going to worry about. I'll let someone else uh, give you all the technical electrical descriptions in the comments. I want to give you what it feels like. So solar panels connecting to the battery on a DC coupled battery like the hybrid, the panels go into the inverter, but they don't come, the power doesn't come out of the inverter. It stays in there and then goes off to the battery. So it doesn't arrive in your house, in your house electrical system, the AC system that you have. So that's DC power coming from the solar panels. In the case of this Huawei battery, it's high voltage battery as well as the high voltage coming from the solar panels. So there's a lot less conversion going on because it's high power to high power. So they haven't got to ramp it down. And also it's DC to DC. Now, whether there's really any conversion to AC going on inside, I don't know. I don't know what all the different boxes and resistors and capacitors and transformers, all the different components that are potentially in there. I haven't got a clue what they are. It just takes the DC energy and puts it into DC energy into the battery. So that's the way to think about the hybrid, that it doesn't leave the inverter. It's just one inverter. So instead of having one inverter for solar, one inverter for the battery, which is what I had with the give energy, one, you're saving on the number of boxes to buy and the number of boxes to install on your wall, um, because that's what I had. I had my solace inverter on the wall for the solar panels then i had the give energy inverter for the ac connected battery because again the solar is coming through my inverter um, on the solace side that's what it was doing um, so being converted from dc to ac arriving in my house on the ac power system of the house then the battery is reacting to seeing that power and then it's inverting that power from ac back into DC and into the battery. So the big difference is the power is arriving in the house on my consumer unit available to me. I, ref I think of it as my AC network, my network of electricity. So the DC hybrid battery isn't reaching my home, isn't reaching my network of AC electricity. It's staying inside the inverter and uh, going from DC on the solar panels to DC into the battery. The give energy, the AC coupled one that I had, uh, was actually arriving into the house. It would be converted from DC to AC once. And then because it's already on my home network, I can then pull it into the give energy battery by converting it again from AC to DC to store it into the battery. Now, I hope that makes sense that it's how far the energy is changing and whether it's transferred into AC and whether it has to be transferred back again. But the big difference with the hybrid battery is because it's staying in the inverter, because it's DC and then DC out into the battery, it's never being seen in the house on my house network. So because of that, apps like the My Energy app that's monitoring the Eddy and the Zappy, they're on my network of the AC power. So they're not seeing that energy coming from the solar panels through the Huawei inverter because it's going straight 
to the battery. It's not arriving in the house, so you can't see it. All your other monitoring systems won't see the energy. So the My Energy app is no longer going to be accurate showing generation of solar power, even with its CT clips in the right position monitoring it for both my inverters, because the energy isn't getting into my house. The only place I can see what's happening on what I'm generating um, and what I'm doing with the energy is in the Huawei app itself. So yes, I can still see it, but for me, because I've got two solar arrays, that really complicates things because if I only had one solar array and it was all on this Huawei system, I could just look at the Huawei app and I would see all of the accurate data and all of the numbers for the generation, the battery, it discharge and charging. It would make sense. But because I've got two inverters, one is hiding the solar power from me and just putting it straight into the battery. The other is inverting it straight away and putting it onto um, my AC home network, as I refer to it. So it complicates things a lot more having two arrays with a, a bit hidden. But of course, when the battery is full and I've finished charging the battery from DC to DC, then the Huawei inverter inverts the power and pumps it out onto the uh, AC network in the house, ready to export it to the grid. So sometimes it's hiding it, sometimes it's not. So again, visibility and how it looks from different apps is very, very odd when you've got a hybrid system. So if you're thinking about going hybrid, then you have to think not only about efficiency and those physical kinds of things you have to think also about how it's going to look to you and whether you want it to look that way your my energy app might be really really important to you and you might want to see it properly in which case going ac connected so the battery has a separate inverter might work better for you so again why would you want to go hybrid well there are several reasons partly you might think well if there's only one inverter not two then i'm saving money but of course, a hybrid inverter is more expensive than an ordinary one. So you might be spending um, £600 on an ordinary AC coupled uh, inverter, whereas the hybrid one might cost you 1000 to 1200 So you might save some money depending on which inverters you are comparing and which you might buy, solar plus battery or hybrid one. Um, but where you will definitely save is on the installation because there's two boxes with them separate. One if you're hybrid. So there's less electrical components, there's less time to install. But that might be a benefit to the installer, not to you. They might be charging a standard fee for installing your equipment. So how much money are you gaining by going hybrid? You know, I, I only think it'll be a few hundred pounds, a couple of hundred pounds. And that's not really worth the savings if you've got any losses that will annoy you and that compromise of not seeing the data. You need to think really carefully and look at the comparison between going AC coupled with a separate battery inverter or whether you want a hybrid one. Now there are more differences so let's cover them slowly. One of them is why do installers like to recommend hybrid inverters? So not only are they saying it's what you want, it's what they want. So why do they want to install them? And one, it's faster. It's an easier install so they can be in and out fast and get on to the next job. So it really helps them. It's easier to install because, again, there's less components. So that makes it easier for the installer as well. But the big reason and why most people are going hybrid is because you're unlikely to need a DNO application to approve more export on your system. So what's that? The... Um, DNO is uh, who's in charge of your electrical connection, um, and therefore they give you authority to be able to export anything. So if you install some solar panels, you need an application to say that you can export the 3.68 kilowatts. That's pretty much a standard, isn't it? 3.68 will virtually always get approved. But anything above that needs a different level of application to your DNO. Um, what is it? Is it a G99? I can never remember the G numbers for it. But you have to make a different application to apply to go above the 3.68 kilowatts being able to export. So if you're installing six kilowatts of solar and want to be able to export more than 3.68 kilowatts, you need to have that different level of DNO application. And they take longer sometimes to come through and they're not always approved. So for an installer, they're keen to keep it on the let's call it g98 i think that's what it is the um, lesser application 
which is more than likely going to be approved. So they can get on with the install and not worry about it. Whereas if you make the bigger application, then of course they've got to wait to see whether you get it before you can actually have your system installed. So the installers having to wait, they can't turn and churn the work as well. A lot of the reasons for going hybrid, the benefits are to the installer, not necessarily to you. Now, one of the reasons why hybrid could be a benefit to you is because if you've made that application and the DNO have said, no, you can't have six kilowatts of export, we're limiting you to four, then you can still install six kilowatts of solar panels, but you'll have to have the inverter um, limiting to the 3.68 or the four kilowatts of export. Now, that means that you can add a battery if you have it DC connected. But if you had an AC connected battery, then in theory, your solar panels could be exporting four kilowatts and the battery, because it's a separate inverter, could be exporting as well. You're not intending to do export, potentially, but most batteries will have the technical capability of exporting. So you've got to add the two together. You've got your solar inverter could be exporting um, if you're not using the energy and your battery could be exporting as well. So the two have to be added together and you'd need an application that approves for the export of both of them. Whereas if it's a DC connected hybrid inverter, then it's not the addition of the two because the battery is within the same inverter. So if it's limiting it to four kilowatts of export, it doesn't matter whether that's half coming from solar, half coming from the battery, all coming from solar, all coming from the battery. It just doesn't matter. It's limited to four kilowatts. So that's one of the really big advantages of a hybrid inverter, that it's preventing you from exporting more than what you're allowed with the DNO. So you can add a battery without that extra DNO application. And that, I think, is why a lot of installers recommend a hybrid inverter, because it's simpler for them, it's easier, they get the applications done sooner, they get most of the benefits. The question is, do you get the benefits? So be sure of what you want, be sure of what export power you're trying to achieve. If you want to go on something like Octopus, Agile, outgoing and therefore you want to be able to export then you're making money the more you export so the more power you can put out the better so maybe an ac coupled battery for that would make more sense because you can export from the solar side and export from the battery as well without more limitations but of course you need that extra dno application to have approval to export that much one of the little quirks, uh, I'll call it a little quirk, um, you might make a big use of it though, um, of a hybrid inverter, is take the example where you've installed six kilowatts of solar panels and you've got a four kilowatt inverter. So in theory, when it's really, really sunny and those panels are all lit up and you're generating six kilowatts, then normally you get clipped, don't you? So that two kilowatts at the top, the two kilowatts above four, between four and six, that's clipped and you don't get that power. It's not inverted and it's neither not exported or not available for you to use in the house. Well, if it stays in the DC side and never arrives into your house and therefore no ability to be exported, you can have the whole six kilowatts. So that two kilowatts of energy that would have been clipped could be charging your battery. Now, depending on your power abilities and how much you can charge, all those sort of things, you could be using four kilowatts of energy in the house and charging two kilowatts into your battery at the same time. So clipping losses could be reduced. So installing more solar panels than your inverter side could make more sense in a hybrid situation. I hope that makes sense. I tried to make it as crystal clear as possible. So just in summary, hybrid inverters are solar and battery combined on the DC side and just one output on the AC side into your house. And you can't tell whether it's the battery or solar that's coming in, that's coming out onto your home network because it's all merged together. Now, the only place you can tell what you're getting is, of course, in the app for the battery system itself. So for me, with the Huawei inverter, I can see whether it's coming from the battery and I can see whether it's coming from solar. But outside of the Huawei app, I can't see a thing. So I can't tell what it is. I can just see how much power there is and know it's coming from the Huawei inverter. Battery, solar, don't know. So what do I prefer? Which one would I choose uh, starting from scratch? I would go AC coupled because the compromise of not being able to see what's going on from other apps 
and also the ability to export more energy, which I do want that ability into the future. Um, that means more to me than the efficiency savings or from clipping or all those sort of things. So, yeah, for me, it makes sense to have AC coupled. But it has been really good so far to see what this hybrid inverter is like, because there are really good positives with this solution now why this solution is better than um, other ones uh, i'm not going to say it's because it's a hybrid inverter i think just the hardware is a better solution but i'll cover that difference the difference between the give energy battery that uh, i used to have and now this huawei um, sun 2000 and luna 2000 solution i'll cover that separately as to why i think it's actually a better solution it's working better for me than uh, the give energy one as always thanks for watching i hope there was something useful there i hope i've made that simple and clear and easy to understand as to why you would want to go hybrid or why you wouldn't um, and why you might want to still consider going ac coupled even though your installer is telling you go hybrid as always thank you for watching don't forget to like the video give me a thumbs up please and uh, subscribe if you haven't it doesn't cost anything and uh, unless you click that bell it won't notify you of new videos coming through thanks again see you again soon bye for now